Well, you know, seems like we're in the honeymoon period with the Switch. Uh, everything Nintendo does at this point uh, is okay, no matter how egregious or, uh, you know, how greedy of a practice or any of that stuff. Because you can't, you don't, you can't diss the Switch because, uh, you know, it's popular, you know. Uh, well, I say f*** that noise. Hey there, fools. Big T here, and I'm back with another video. And as I'm sure you've guessed from the title, this video is going to be about Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze for the Switch. And uh, what I feel like is a, I don't know, greedy tactic um, outcome to the uh, Switch version, which, you know, doesn't make sense. And I think I'll state my case pretty well here. Um, I see a lot of people, you know, saying pretty much the same thing, that the game's overpriced and that um, uh, should be cheaper for the Switch. And, uh, and you know, I, I don't want to say it's like 50-50, but uh, there's definitely enough of dissension um, that you notice it. And uh, there's also enough of uh, placating, is that the right word? Or there's enough of, there's enough people kind of dismissing that argument so here is my case um if you guys been around on my channel long enough uh, if you subscribed to me a while uh this game right here was my 2014 game of the year uh beating out um bayonetta 2 which was basically uh the runner-up that year um it's like wii u i thought was starting to hit its stride and um there was going to be a shift and the narrative with the, the Wii U, but that didn't quite happen, unfortunately. And uh, but that doesn't change the fact that a great game on a non-popular system is is still a great game. <laughs> that doesn't affect the game. Um, and obviously, with the Switch being a very popular system, we're getting Wii U ports. Um, Pretty much full throttle at this point, especially this month. Uh, we're getting a lot of ports, <clears throat> and uh, you know, some people are turned off by that. I made a video talking about how it's nuanced and uh, how I treat each port differently, and that's going to be the same for this. Um, I don't mind this port existing. Uh, I felt like this game did not sell as well as it should have, especially if you go back to Ducky Kong Country Returns on Wii or on Wii on Wii. Uh, I think that sold uh, over 5 million uh, copies and it was a huge success and which is the reason we got the sequel and Nintendo was hoping that the same was going to happen for this but obviously it didn't because there wasn't an, enough of an install base for one and the system wasn't uh, selling that well so uh, I you know um, I was very this is like my my one of my favorite 2D platformers of all time, arguably my favorite. Um, sometimes maybe nostalgia gets in the way with some of the ones I put above it, but as far as challenge-wise and just pure fun, this game is definitely that. And uh, you know, like I said, the this version didn't sell that well. I think initially it sold barely over a million. I remember looking up and it was like a million point one or something, and that was before they did the selects version of this, which was. Uh, Nintendo on Wii U, they decided to do this whole select line of games that I guess sold over 500,000 copies or something like that, and uh, <clears throat> they marked them down to $20, uh, Nintendo titles, and this is one of them. So currently on Wii U, I haven't checked myself, I heard that it got pulled down, which I did check for that, saw so it pulled down uh, the Wii U version, uh, but I heard that it was back up, uh, so it's back up. For twenty dollars on Wii U, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, yeah. So I think right now a game sits at maybe almost two million, which a lot of those sales, like I said, uh, were at the twenty dollar price point. So, you know, the game <clears throat> I think had a decent budget um, because you know Retro was working on it for a while, and you can tell by the quality of the game that it was a high quality game, even though people. 
uh, initially he was like, oh no, not a, we don't want a 2D game, uh, especially a 2D Donkey Kong game uh, from Retro. We want Metroid at the time. But, you know, when the game came out, the, all that kind of went away. People still wanted Re Metroid, but they were very happy with Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. So, <clears throat> along comes the Switch, and we get this version along with other uh, ports, and it's $60. $60. And initially, this game launched on Wii U for $50. So that's already slightly egregious. Maybe you can say, well, the cart is more expensive. Um, but the problem is that Nintendo themselves devalued this game. It's not the fact that it's on Wii U, or it's not the fact that it's um, uh, an old game, four years old. It's not that old, but it's four years old. Nintendo said, this game is now worth $20. And so regardless of the fact if you had a Wii U or not, um, if you haven't played this game on Wii U, Nintendo marked this game down. Retail, this was their, this was their full price, $20. Um, so you have that. <clears throat> now with that, I would think this game was gonna launch, I initially thought this game would be like a $40 game. 50 at max, which would be okay. 40 would be, I think, the sweet spot for this game. They obviously added, um, they bump up the resolution from 720 to 1080, which is good. The load times are much better. I think they're by half. It's faster to load. Uh, maybe a little bit more, maybe by 60%, 65%, something like that. So that's all good. And they obviously added cr uh, Cranky Kong. <laughs> they added uh, Funky Kong, which is basically kind of an easy mode um, or um, a new kind of speed run mode, if you will. I've seen some cool stuff done with speed runs with Cranky Kong. Or, uh, there I go. Go again. With uh, Funky Kong. So, that's cool. But, here's the thing. Um, like I said, it doesn't matter if you bought the Wii U version or not. Uh, because, uh, to justify it being $60. Whoa, all these people didn't buy this game, so it doesn't matter. Um, obviously it matters to me. Because I'm not going to buy this game at $60. Um, hoping that it gets down to around 30, 35 at some point. Uh, maybe in a year or so, we'll see. You know, it's hard for Nintendo games to go down, even if they've been devalued by Nintendo themselves. Um, but, you know, that's just it. And so those are your upgrades. There's not, the game is basically the same game with some uh, slight visual bump, slight, <laughs> and, uh, 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 easy mode, if you will, and that's it. So you would think the price would, um, uh, the price would signal that it would signify that, like, uh, because this game isn't very different um, from <clears throat> what we initially got. And yes, it's four years old. And yes, Nintendo themselves marked the game down to twenty dollars, and it's currently twenty dollars on a different console. Uh, but again, if you don't have that console, and obviously buying that console and then buying the game is more expensive than buying uh, the Switch version of Donkey Kong, then that I understand that. But it doesn't matter because market-wise, Nintendo decided this game was cheaper. So I was thinking $40. Obviously, it's not 60 and I didn't like that. So I have examples of Nintendo themselves doing adding value to a game that's old and making it worth a full price. And that's this game. Uh, this game obviously came out on Wii U for 60 bucks, Mario Kart 8. Uh, and it was, you know, just the bare game, you know? Uh, obviously you unlock characters and all that stuff, but there's a lot of DLC that came with this game, uh, that, well, that didn't come with the game, but initially came out, rolled out for this game that we didn't get initially, and that was, above $60. So you bought the $60 game and then you bought the DLC later, which I believe I paid, it's rough to remember. I think I played somewhere around $15, I think total for the DLC packs. If you did it early, you got a discount. So I can't remember exactly what it was, but so the game basically uh, $65 or $65, $75, somewhere around there with taxes or whatever, if you uh, bought it and then bought the DLC. Um, and so, you know, this version gives you all the DLC, 
um, uh, I think the frame rate was bumped up and the, the, the uh, it's 1080p now, right? It, I, I didn't get that wrong, right? It's 1080p, a uh, docked, obviously. Um, you get the added bonus of portables, but that's not a value thing. You know, it's value to you if you, you know, value being able to play everywhere, which I do, but that's not like something you would charge people more for because you can play it portably. So when I hear people, oh, the portable mode, um, you know, justify, no, that will never justify a game being more expensive because you can play it anywhere. Um, that's just an added feature. That's not like you don't charge people more so you can play the, a game on a tinier screen. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So the thing that gives this value is all the DLC plus an actual real battle mode. And that is the only reason I rebought this game was because they added the battle mode, which is what I basically play exclusively when I play this game. I usually go and play the battle mode uh, at this point, or I'll jump into races occasionally, but I mostly pay, play battle mode. And to me, the price of $60 is justified in this game because it added value to it. And, you know, it wasn't just minor little things. There was value added to this. Oh, and like I said, it's a multiplayer game, so you can get hours and hours continuing past uh, the initial game itself. Uh, you get hours of enjoyment beyond that. So that also helps in a repurchase. And then we have this. This is what makes it the most peculiar and strange uh, that they decided to charge $60, which is $10 more than the retail price of Wii U for Donkey Kong. They charge $60 for this. but um, I'm looking at Amazon and this is a $40 game and this game launched at $40 and here's the weird thing this actually has new content <laughs> there are actually new levels in this game um, they added uh, Mario Odyssey stuff to this game and it's still $40 so it doesn't make any damn sense if you even just look at this game this game's port to this it's forty dollars, and they added new stuff. This didn't. I mean, you can say they added a new character, but that didn't really change Donkey Kong. It's not like um, it's basically a, a easy mode. But they added new stuff to this, and it's still forty dollars. Why? Why isn't that just okay? Well, this is just this is just outright a greed, you know, greedy thing. And it it's, it sucks because I love this game. I want to be able to champion this game and say, hey, all you Switch guys who never had a Wii U, especially, go buy this game. And if it came out at the price of this that's coming out, which is $40, I'll be screaming for the mountaintops for people to buy this. But I can't. I'm a real person. I have to be honest with myself and say, you know, no, this isn't great. This isn't a good thing. And as a Nintendo fan, you should do that. You have to do that. You know, and it could have easily um, gave this game value. Uh, by adding Donkey Kong Country Returns to it, you know, uh, giving an HD version of that, you know, just up it. I'm sure it wouldn't have took that much to do that. Um, up it to, you know, 720, 1080p um, for the Switch and, you know, doing a little bit with the controls and stuff like that. And that would have made it an immensely more valuable um, prospect at $60 than just the bare bones... Uh, port from uh, from Wii U. That would have made it a lot better. They could have done that, but they didn't do that. And I, I don't know why, but they did. Um, Cause I expect better from Nintendo than the other guys do. And speaking of the other guys, there's this. <laughs> this game here, Shadow of the Colossus, just launched a few months ago on uh, PS4. And it's not just a straight port of this game. This is the HD version. There, obviously, Shadow Classes, if you don't know, is a PS2 game. Um, great PS2 game that came out <clears throat> late in the PS2's life um, by Team Ico. That's why this is the Ico collection has um, has Shadow of the Classes and uh, Ico on it. Um, but I'm, I'm speaking specifically of the PS4 ver uh, game. But I don't have it. It is a ground up remake. Of this game, um, obviously it is very similar. 
um, the art style, it, it, you know, is very similar. But it is a remake. It is a um, built for the PS4 version. It's not just a, they didn't just slap this game uh, onto the PS4 uh, like they did. Let's say um, uh, what was it? The Kingdom Hearts Collection. That's basically this. I have that too. I, I don't want to get up and grab it, but I have the Kingdom Hearts uh, HD Collection for PS3. And they basically just slapped that on PS4. This is actually a ground up remake. Remake slash remaster of Shadow of the Colossus. And it's $40. This would have been way more acceptable to me as a $60 game because it is a remaster, remake. Uh, ground up on the PS4 uh, than this. So, if Sony <laughs> can do it, why can't we expect Nintendo to do it? Like, what is so... What is so wrong about people making these uh, connections and saying that, you know, this should be the case for this game? That this game is overpriced. It is. It's overpriced. And it hurts for me to say that because, you know, this game is so great, it's worth $60. But the problem is, Nintendo devalued this game themselves. You know, by initially launching the Wii U version at $50, and then marking it down to $20. I'm not saying the game should be $20 on Switch. I just said $40, even $50 would be acceptable. But $40 would be the sweet spot. Whereas $50 would be like, all right, it's a little overpriced, but it's kind of acceptable. You know, if you look at the cart, you know, maybe it's a little more expensive because of the cart. Nintendo doesn't want to eat the cost. You can make an excuse. It's still not the great excuse because Nintendo should. Uh, and there's these people that are running around, you know, well, the Switch is a popular console. And therefore, you know, the games should cost more. I guess they should cost more because Switch is popular, whereas the Wii U wasn't. I mean, what kind of logic is that from a consumer? You are a gamer, a consumer. If you have Nintendo stock, that's fine. You can say things like that. But you're a consumer first, I would think. A gamer first. Nintendo's bottom line doesn't matter to you, I would hope. Nintendo's making good money. They didn't need this game to be $60 to survive. You know? They could have... Have easily put this game at forty dollars, made a good profit off of it, and moved on. So, to me, it's money grab. It's 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 money grubbing. It's greedy for them to do that. And you know how you feel about it is fine. But this is how I feel about it. And uh, you know, so that it's 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 factual. This is no. This is not an opinion that this game is overpriced. Nintendo is telling you that this game is overpriced because of this version. Well, not this version specifically, but the Selects version, which is the same game with a little banner over it that says Selects. So, that's not an opinion that this game is overpriced. It's a fact, and Nintendo made it a fact. <laughs> so, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's not even that big a deal. Like, why is there such pushback? It just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I, I don't understand it. This is my game of the year 2014. I want to be able to champion this game. But Nintendo, uh, you know, charging, you know, for me, I mean, my, for, for my tastes, $15, $20 too much for it uh, is what's, you know, making it hard for me to do that. Um, so do I recommend the Wii U version? Not if you don't have a Wii U. <laughs> if you have a Wii U and you don't have this game, definitely get it on Wii U uh, over Switch. If you have a Switch, uh, I would say wait. Um, because you don't want to send a signal that this is okay, Nintendo. You don't want to send that signal that it's okay for you guys to do this. You, for you to devalue your own game. And, and then charge more for the Switch version. Um, this is their own doing. I didn't do this. So, that's what it is. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, as always. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you fools next time. Peace out.